Are you planning to take the CompTIA a exam and want to know the necessary steps that you can take to help you successfully pass the a exam on your first attempt? Well, in this video, I'll be going over some of the resources, strategies, and effective study methods that have helped me to pass both the Core 1 and Core 2 exam for the a Again, I'm Quay Tech, and I go over IT and game development topics. If you find this video helpful, Please make sure to like subscribe so I can continue making more content like this. And if you haven't already, make sure to check out my other social media pages where I post exclusive content and sneak peeks. Before I share the resources I've used, I'll be giving you a brief summary of the a certification. The a is a vendor neutral certification taken by many who want to jumpstart their IT career and is considered a step up from the Tech Plus certification. In order to obtain the a certification, you need to take two separate exams that cover different IT topics. The Core 1 exam covers mobile devices, networking, hardware, cloud computing, and troubleshooting. The Core 2 exam covers topics related to operating systems, cybersecurity, software troubleshooting, scripting, and even a little bit of AI literacy. I've attached both exam domains in, in the description of this video and you need to get a minimum passing score of 675 out of 900 for the Core 1 exam and a 700 out of 900 for the Core 2 exam. There are a variety of resources that I've used to help me prepare for the a exam. I'll be mentioning the three resources that I've found to be most helpful alongside some practice tests that I've utilized as well. The first resource that I used was Mike Myers' course on Udemy. For, for the Core 1 and Core 2. Mike Myers offers engaging lessons and even some free labs. You can purchase his course at a cheap discount during a Udemy sale, and I would recommend purchasing his book alongside the course. Another resource that I've used was Professor Messer's free course on YouTube as a last minute review of the concepts gone over in the a exam. He thoroughly explained each concept and even demonstrate some of the labs that you can expect to see in the Core 1 and Core 2 exam. Another thing to note is that he also hosts group study sessions as well on a daily basis. If you're looking for practice tests, I would recommend checking out Jason Dion's test on Udemy. The questions featured on his test accurately represent the questions you will most likely encounter on the a exam. And if you would like a study app along with the other resources that you have, I recommend installing this app as well. It offers flashcards, quick practice tests, and it even analyzes your readiness level to take the a exam. Before taking the a I would recommend downloading the exam objectives for both the Core 1 and Core 2. The exam objectives give you a clear outline of each concept covered in the a including port numbers, commands, etc. I've attached links to both exam objectives in, in the description below this video. For any exam that I'm studying for, I like to take notes because it helps me to remember the concepts and I can refer back to my notes when needed. I recommend taking notes with Notion, you can set different categories for concepts that you're reviewing, and it offers many options to aid with note taking. Notion is free to use and is available across all platforms. Another strategy that has helped me was the use of flashcards. You can find many flashcard sets on Quizlet or even make your own custom sets. Using flashcards has helped me to remember several concepts gone over in the Core 1 and Core 2 exam. Specifically, the port numbers and commands that I had to memorize for both tests. I recommend studying at least 1-2 to two hours each day and incorporating an optimized study schedule. I studied Monday through Friday and left the weekend to, re to rest or review concepts I didn't fully grasp. The next set of tips and strategies I'll be sharing will, will apply to the day you take either the Core 1 or Core 2 exam. Following these tips will significantly increase your chances of passing either exam. If you have time before taking your exam, I would recommend watching TechVolt's last minute review video. Watching it will help you to refresh your memory of different topics and remind you of some of the things you need to memorize. TechVolt has, vid has review videos for both exams. It is vital that you get sufficient amount of rest before you take any exam. 
Getting at least eight hours of sleep is ideal, and doing this will increase your focus levels and increase your chances of passing. When taking an exam, I recommend utilizing the process of elimination when selecting an answer. This involves reasoning and selecting the answer that seems most logical. Remember to not second guess yourself, and if you get stuck on a question, you can always come back to it later. You have to be aware of CompTIA's wording of certain questions while taking your a exam. They, they may ask the question in a way to confuse you or second guess yourself. I found reading the questions more than once to be helpful when selecting an answer and utilizing this strategy will increase your chances of selecting the correct answer. When you take the Core 1 or Core 2 exam, you will first be presented with some performance based questions like this, but I would recommend doing the PBQs after you answer all of the multiple choice questions. The reason why I recommend doing this is because the PBQs are time consuming and can cause unneeded stress. The last tip I would like to share is to take your time during the duration of the exam. You have an hour and 30 minutes to answer all of the questions and you'll probably have time to review all of your answers once you're done. Another thing to keep in mind is that you have the option to flag questions you would like to refer back to as well. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe so I can continue to make more content like this. And if you have any questions or feedback, feel free to comment down below and I'll respond to your comment. Again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.